So what you know what we've done with the other groups is we've sort of uh, gone around and shared what we do on each of these projects, and then I've sort of given you uh, a peek at how I approach it as a lighting designer, okay. more so as uh, how I see a product and, and how the people that I work with, architects and landscape architects, see a project which is different than from how contractors do. So I'll put these out. Which one do you want to tackle first? This house, I would, uh, that's a tough one. I don't know which one we want to deal with first. Yeah, let's do the tough one. So what were your thoughts on, on this project? A lot of core drilling. Kind of have an idea where you put fixtures? Uh, yeah, up the, the, the folds for the pillars. Mm -hmm. um, well, how would you I, how would you uplight the pillars? Garden light encourages us to core drill, and of course, Corey would core drill. I I would assume the expansion area. Uh, he would remove the grout from here, and and he 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 core drill and uplight each of these. Yeah. And then he possibly would also core drill the hand railing and put in a, uh, an SA-1, the, sa the halo, uh, in each of these locations uplighting the thing. When you came out, of course, you'd see that, and, and if this is super white. Um, and then he also would put lights uplighting each of the columns up there. That's kind of what he would do. And then over here, you know, that move piece. that out, uh, you know, uplight, 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 uplight. Yeah. Wall. I don't know. I'm talking about how he would light it. I would not do any of those things. <laughs> and and this shows you how uh, different how different is. I I agree with Darren. What the, I I tr I would first of all when you go to a project, you really shouldn't think of where you're going to put fixtures or how you're going to do stuff because it short circuits the design process. So when I go, especially hard case scape contractors, they're going, okay, I got to get a light here, I got to get a white here, I got to get a white. Sit back and pretend like you're sitting on a sofa or a chair. Sit back and envision, really try to envision what you want to see for the property. And what I see is, is something that's kind of spooky. And what makes this spooky is there's no really, at night, this is going to be, I'm assuming, dark. And if they do have decorative fixtures on the ceiling, it's going to be glary and uncomfortable. If this were my home, I'm not going to be sitting here or here. I mean, I don't even need patio furniture, for the love of God. So what I would do is I'd actually downlight behind each of those. So this is just to start. I would downlight or uplight, whichever you choose. If we core, since we're talking about core drilling, I would actually core drill behind each of these pillars and uplight it. The light will come up the pillar. It'll cascade across the ceiling, and the light will back down and fill the space, as well as the column will fill that light with space. So you can sit there and, and hopefully not have too much uh, light glare in your face, but it'll actually warm up and light this entire thing, making it more inviting, helping it look like the light's actually coming out of the residence, even if it's not. Mm -hmm. And as Darren said, I would actually use down lights in this op to down light the steps in each of these locations, and possibly even uh, the columns from this side. By down lighting, I think we can achieve that. We could actually, so now the light, by the time it gets here, it's about here, and now it's settling. Your steps would be perfectly lit. Your columns would be softly cast in light. They'd match the type of lighting that's coming from the inside. And I do the same thing over here on the trellis. I would use the trellis in a down lighting mode instead of core drilling, core drilling, core drilling. Now you've got room for plant placements. If they actually put a decent plant here instead of this, some sort of flowering perennial or annual, you'd have bursts of color. It'd be, it'd be beautiful. We're treating this almost as an outdoor room. Soon as soon as you start uplighting here, when you're in the pool and these are uplit, all you're going to see this is what you're going to see, because this the glare off of this is going to be tremendous. And you know, once again, now you're frogging around with uh, getting wire there. The other thing, it's a complete code violation to put lights there. You cannot, based on NEC code, put a fix maybe here, but certainly not here. Here, you need 10 foot de step back from the pool surface to put a light. In Texas, they do, they do it all the time. Well, you probably do it occasionally too. Yeah, so, but just some in, in as a professional installer, you, you know, it, it can cause a problem. So, and that's running, and running a line, if you're running a line, if you're trying to get here, are you riding that gutter all the way? And I, I would, you, I, yep, yep. There's a spot, you'll find a spot to tuck a wire. Yeah, you can, you can probably, this, this is a French girl, yeah. 
you want that light to be in high because you're not you're gonna be as high as possible with that light so it's close to where you can find the wire. Yep, and we and you could use it. There's several different things you could you could actually even probably use with a small glare shield. You could even use that little X fixture. That, that would work great. It's got a nice little thing. And then you just tuck the wire up behind. And of course, you place it to chase it down. And then using a larger fixture here, you could downlight these planting beds so you get the burst of the annual color. You wanted to light these pots. I wish I had the catalog, the Hadco catalog that I did a number of years ago on the cover. We lit pots like this from up here. You can actually, just like they're performers on a stage, you could downlight these with enough glare shield. And now you've got nice, beautiful bursts of color. So when people look out the window, that's what they see when they're on the patio and you see the So you would mount those up here to, and then directional yep. Yep. light? Yep, directional yep. with a very direct tight direct beam spread. Now, would you, would you skip this column because of the gutter? I mean, what do you do with that? That's the other design problem. First, like I said earlier, I mean, you, you know, Darren, we're talking, we could downlight each of these columns. But I mean, with a gutter placement like that, I don't think, I would skip lighting the columns you don't want to, you don't want from the front. You don't want to draw attention to that. No. Oh, the gutter here we're talking about on that column? Mm -hmm. That would throw me off if I was trying to figure this out. Yeah. yeah. Well, you'd probably it's have to leave tough, that one dark. And so here, and here's the here's the other problem with lighting from uh, putting a light here. I think he actually cordialed in the railing. This right here is almost unbearable to look at. At that point, it get it evens out, but, but nice here. And then of course you get the nice undercast here. I would actually consider putting up lights. You could put one on a riser here and shine it here, one here, one here, one here, and now let this be the reflective source of the light and let that fill your space with illumination. And then you would, you'd have to do pavers to get in that bed, unless like, if there's no power source probably, in there? No. If it's travertine, you'd probably have to... Uh, how would, what's the easiest way to get into that bed? Work the cracks? No. No, you just from go, here, right? Yeah, yeah, you take it right down. Yeah. And there's one, <laughs> so... I'm not a big fan of that either, but it works. Yeah. And done properly, it's fine. And then here too, same type of thing. You've got this dark, spooky thing at night. By uplighting the inside of this, you can get a really nice, the, the ceiling's lit, the face is filled, the place is filled with light. And hopefully there's an opportunity over here. I don't know what's over here, but you could also cross light this upper structure. Maybe there's a roof structure up here and illuminate that from afar instead of putting little hot spots all over the house. Just a couple of well-placed well lights, cascading light, cross-lighting that would look really nice. So Maybe, you're, you're mm -hmm. saying lighting it from behind yeah. at the bottom so it's so, yeah. up So you, you put a fixture like here and a riser that would shine up and light there. And hopefully there's an opportunity to up light here and the light just spreads and softly almost kisses the house. And then there's a little bit of more light on the inside so it warms it up, it's inviting. It looks the nice. softness of these two lights you'd have to match it so that this was still prominent, these lights over here, because yeah. you don't want to wash them out. Yeah, I mean, I think it looked pretty even, actually. Yeah. But yes, you're right. It's, it's, it's a tricky job. I would, it is. I would, I would be, yeah. Did that bring any insights to you? Or? Yeah, because yeah. I'm not a very good art Well, I'm Sure you, you are. Yeah, cord, I think cord drilling is a key, but you, you need to use it where it's appropriate. And I, 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 I think it's appropriate here, but that's how I and do it. And, you know, if, if there was any question, like, Excuse you, me. you got the opportunity to do this job, you're not going to say, oh, that's a little too hard for me. I would even, I, I'm not afraid to go, to bounce off of, of one of y'all, which I, hopefully that's what we're here for. That's what we're here for. Send them, send some, one of y'all this picture and say, what would you do? Even if you don't do everything that they, you say or someone else says, but at least you have some ideas some other, some, and another perspective on the property. Yeah. Yeah. No. Well, that's that's kind of what I do. So. So if I sent you this picture, maybe. Okay, I'm just yeah, you know, two thousand dollars design fee. Yeah. yeah fine. No. <laughs> or just for one text back, how much was that? Nothing. Just call me. Send me a photo, and I, we, we could chat we just, real quick we about it. We pulled up the code, and, it, and I, in my at least in Florida, it's six foot from the pull edge, and that's for high voltage. I'm, I'm looking for low voltage now. But in Texas, they ten volt, ten foot from the water line. I've always heard, even in South Florida, that it was. I, I said 10 foot. That's right. Well, I'm Florida, Florida has accepted the national the national electric code, the NEC book, and the NEC book says 10. Yeah, I know that. If there's a if something's different in Florida, there might they might have a revision. I don't I don't live in Florida. I don't know. <laughs> well, do you know do you know how that law originated? There's two stories. One, someone was using an Acme transformer. They, metal, they were messing around with it, and somehow the return wire, the one of the wires going to the fixture, was energized to 120. The little girl crawled out of the pool, reached for the fixtures, and was immediately electrocuted. 
story two was there was a Hadco fixture, the little pagoda lights. The bulbs were always burning out. The guy was upset. And they were the old style where you screw the bulbs in. They were low voltage, uh, you know, AV lamps in those pagoda lights around the pool. Bayonet No, the, just to screw in Edison base, type oh, A19 okay. Edison yeah, base. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the guy gets, uh, yeah, the guy gets an idea. He cuts the, the cable off, puts a pigtail extension cord on, plugs it into the house, goes to the home store, and screws regular bulbs, regular light bulbs in. Problem is solved for him. The problem was the fixtures are old, it came, one of them was frayed, still illuminating, but it was completely charged. It was at the end of a pool where there's, the water was pooling, somebody stuck in it, I believe intoxicated, but still stepped in it, and was electrocuted. And he went, he went low bulbs, so one to one in. Yep. Yeah. Both were 120, but it was because of, of problems. So that's that's why they those laws are in place. That's what I was told by an NEC uh, guy at uh, 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 a classroom that I took. Well, they use it because even if you take it, uh, they, um, your low voltage license, you still have to. Yeah. Well, in 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 the re Acme used to have a pool and spa rated transformer. Right? We had a complete divide. The two electrical departments completely separate. But that they had a failure, so they, they updated the code sometime in the mid 90s, I believe, for that. So this is a different uh, house. What are your thoughts on this? Can I just say that? Sure. Like, so we were all there, and I I know I keep saying this over and over again, but so the lighting. So you know those little these are little. Soft. Yes, soft the soffit. Those so, down. But they're saying, everybody, or not everybody, but some people are saying, no, you don't want that because you want to do up lighting versus the down lighting. I don't know. Um, so, in our area, right, I've seen a few houses that have them in the soffit. Um, and most of them, to me, it looks, it looks tacky because I can see each individual light. Um, and I, I don't think it looks good. But typically, I don't like to see the source of the light. Right. To me, that like right. Well, and you, I just feel like, you, just like you can see this, you're inevitably going to see the source of the light unless you really shield it. And if you're shielding it, it's not really recessed. Right. I don't know. Me, I like, I like the look because it's a new look. I mean, I just like light. So, but I think I'm gonna, I would try to definitely because those pictures he's showing me on his phone are just freaking amazing. So, I like that look. So, of course. I mean, I would never take these guys' sconces off because they're high-end sconces, but I would definitely, sh I would start shooting up now. And for me, it's easier to drill a bunch of holes. Well, maybe because he doesn't like being up there. I have a boom truck, so I can easily boom, 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 put holes in and go through the attic and run wires on it. So yeah. it's easier to install than core drilling and being down on the ground and doing all that see, stuff. See, I mean, like, someone's obviously marked here, so they're saying, oh, do a source, that was light another source here, a light yeah. source here, a light source here. That was saying, Michelle. Going up. Yeah. Okay, but you're still seeing the light source. You're not, you, there's, you're there's no way you're not going to be ones, here. Right? You know, you're not hiding so many, it. Many. No, but you're not going to be here looking down at the light. You're going to be here. You're going to be right here, right? No, you're going to so, be out here driving by in the street. Sure. Because that's what's where everybody <laughs> driving by. You're not going to see the light right. source there. I like up lighting. I don't know. Maybe I'm just stuck. I would up light yeah. the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. So from a design perspective, from an educated, professional <laughs> design perspective, ASID application in lighting and, and ALA lighting. The problem with the, the, the biggest problem with this house is scale. It's imposing. Mm -hmm. So what, what I would do is I'd use the small floodlights all the way around the perimeter of the house, everywhere, so that this entire house was perfectly lit. This is a projection screen of a house. This is like a movie theater screen. It is so white yeah. and so reflective. By uplighting, by uplighting this, I want the light to come up to here and just sort of start to dissipate. That's just me. I, I don't want this house to be lit all the way to the top. Mm. I think it's imposing. The problem with putting soffit lights, and that's done a lot on, on contemporary homes, nothing would make this traditional Mediterranean home look more modern than soffit lights. And that's probably why they chose not to do it. Mm -hmm. But we still have ah, to address there you it. Go. Yeah. I like that. This, this this is a traditional home. I don't care who you are, I do not see us putting lights here and, and concealing it and wiring it and having water issues and all it's that. It's gotta be tough to conceal yeah, that. Yeah, I would not do that. I'd let the light, I'd let, and my thinking is with the proper 
proper floodlight, we could get the light almost all the way up to the top where it just kissed so the house looks settled and we're reducing the scale. Well, that's what, I mean, that's what I was asking. So you, you would, it's almost like shrinking the house a that's little bit. It is. Yeah. yeah that, that's you're, you're, I, you're, I like, I like if you, if you bring If you bring the level of light uh, down, uh, in this area, you'll actually help reduce the scale of the house. Yeah, I like that little and there is not, and I'll take a peek at that in a second. There is nothing architecturally interesting about the no, upper half of this very, house. Very, very bland. And then here, you can core drill on either side, which will fit, which will will cross light the pe the. I just wanted you to catch this. So, we'll cross light here and here and here and here, so that when the light, uh, this is what Corey would do. Now, now the light will, will, one light will come up here, and one light will come up here, and this, this coach light won't create, create such a shadow. And so and that's what Corey would do. So if, when you're saying you put floodlights along here, like, mm -hmm. uh, are you gonna go in between? Everywhere, I would evenly lit the whole thing. I, would light, I wouldn't just accent light it, so I'd evenly light the whole thing. Yeah, so, because I would say that this is not going to create a shadow. It is. The, tree, the trees will be silhouetted against the house. The celebrity here is the house. The problem with this tree right here um, is that you, to, to light that tree effectively, you're going to have to, for one, try to hide the fixture. You probably only have about that much space. I wouldn't light the landscape. I'd let the house be the so, so five lights? Five lights I would, and you'd go on this? I'd probably, do one, I'd probably do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, about 20 fixtures probably across the house. which side of the tree are you going on? On the back side. Mm -hmm. Everything up against so the house. The whole here. house. Well, is around. So you're not letting the trees at all. You're doing a back shot on yeah. yeah. yeah, so the whole. Yeah, so the house is sort of self-lit. So when the, the lights are inside the house, it looks like the light is spilling out. And now, Corey doesn't have a picture of it, but he did uplight the garage by putting a light on it. I've not been a big fan of that. I think it looks kind of cool. The other, one of the other trick things you can do is you can put one of those little X fixtures, the little tiny postage stamp size LEDs. Have you seen those? The owl. The owl, like an owl, but they come, they come in a variety of different the applications. Micro. The micro. You can, this is, and it's a shame to do it. This is a, a fixture from a company called Fine Art here in Florida. This is about $2,000 fixtures. But I have drilled a small hole here and you can put a fixture like that. I've got another company that makes a different fixture, but we're going to use garden light here. And what you do is you put a small hatch transformer, a little micro transformer about that big, mm -hmm. and you place that in the wor uh, electrical junction box. junction box. So when that light comes on, it shines a nice little light, softly lighting down the garage. Or, because everything's up light, you could also core drill and then light that garage door. Um, I didn't think I'd like it. Uh, I just saw a picture of a white garage door lit, and it actually looks really nice. Looks really nice. I'm, gonna, I'm certainly going to do it. Is that fixture in here? The little one? Yeah. Yeah, it is. It's uh, the other thing with that house is nothing over 20 watts, otherwise yeah. it'll be too yeah. way too dark. Yeah. It'll, it'll be, that's, that's a, yeah, it'll be, it'll be the White House. Yeah. And and I and if it's in Miami, they want it bright. My guy down there says they want it stupid bright, so probably do 35. <laughs> but said everybody like down, a hot spot? Yeah. He said everybody down there freaking wants shit like. Yeah. <laughs> Right, it's and it's they and it's tra one it's one a one traditional one. house. It's not it's a modern. I do 27k. Trees are dropping three, four, five lights on. It's, like, it's really? this one right here. Oh, so you got the owl, and then you also have the micro max series right there. That's what would be used. Standard. So you put that inside that picture. And you don't you don't have to, and you don't have to. It is. But what you do is you drill a hole in the bottom because this no, is no have. light comes out of that fixture. It's completely uh, it's completely dark and a big metal box at the bottom. So you drill it and it's just it's just empty. It's just an empty bowl. You drill a small hole the same size as this. You put the fixture inside so the light just sneaks out that little hole. And then inside that fixture, there's room to put a micro transformer. The transformer is slightly larger than my watch. When the light comes on, that little light comes on. And it lights up the entire garage. But it would have to because it wouldn't be tied in with the rest of the lights. So it would have to be on. The coach lights would have to be on. I'm just giving an option. Mm -hmm. If it were my project, those coach lights would be on every time the landscape lighting would be on. There'd be no options. Right. There'd be no options because those properly dimmed are really going to. Uh, but if it's all on a, a smart system. Really yeah, it doesn't matter. Yeah. So, what are your thoughts? What are your thoughts on this? I think that's pretty accurate. I mean, it's not 
the way you're saying to do it is actually not that hard of a job. No. Uh, that's kind of uh, the way I would like to do it. The other, the other options are, if you can, is to core drill inside the vestibule or the entryway here, and then light this space up. We, this needs to be the brightest spot on the entire project. Mm. So we want that to be warm and environmental. Yeah, exactly. But the, to down like the steps would, would destroy it. The steps are, no one wants to look at the stairs. Don't light the stairs. Don't put little lights in the steps. Don't ever do it. It's dumb. And it's not safe because it creates these glare spots. And when you get older, you can't tell the, the depth or the height. So what you do is you get one of the uh, garden light fixtures that is a down light. And you place it way up here. And, it, and you get it so the light hits just about the doorknob and then spreads out to the threshold of the steps. Possibly two, I can't tell from the photograph. The other location, if you could get a light up there, and I, once again, I don't know, but placing a fixture up here and then shining light down on either side here to fill that area in with light would be really pretty. And you could also use, you could also put that same effect we talked about in the garage on these guys. What, what's missing here would be once you backlight those with the core drilled lights, to have a nice container of blooming annual plants would be really pretty, and somehow downlit from those fixtures, or perhaps those fixtures do light like out the bottom. I don't would know. you use the the, the, the S? Yeah. SV2 or 3 up there and like have it over just You could. I probably want, I don't I don't know what I'm working with up there, but yes, one, one of the fixtures to downlight, yes. And Adam, you didn't do anything for the um, for the shrubs that they have. I mean, would you, we just talked about lighting the house. You leave the shrubs on. Yeah, because you're actually, you're backlighting the house, so basically the, the shrubs are going to get oh silhouetted. My. It's going to be, you know, a dark object in front of a lit background. Okay. They're not big enough. This is really I mean, Big back. enough to light, but no. I think it's too much. Okay. Yeah. Less is more. Yeah, this is a not a friendly sofa. <laughs> right now, is less is more. It is, and the problem the problem is where are you going to hide the the fixture that lights the tr shrubs? Yeah. So you you put a little uh, floodlight on that tree. Now you're casting the shadow on a perfectly pristine mm. sheet of a backdrop. You're casting a, a shadow that doesn't really look that great, okay. and and you're gonna you're, the bottom of the tree is gonna be so much brighter, and the light coming out of the plant material is gonna give away the location of the fixture. Helpful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because my immediate thought would be to put the lights in front of the shrubs. Yeah. And the, the, the law we violate when we do that here is light requires distance. We need to have about that much space. Looking at this, I'm not sure there is. I mean, there, it's just too much of a hot spot. I mean, you probably have it over here, but not in this here. And then we stopped and met up with Adrian. Oh yeah. I don't even ask him. I just do it. I'm so sorry. Well, thank you. I do that all the time. I like to do things I've known Adrian. Yeah, they don't. But I ask them. Just do it. You just do it. They don't know. I think that's. I think that's great. Because otherwise, I don't. I'm gonna text him and tell him I ran into it. What are you? What are your thoughts on this project? Your money. I didn't say I just want to follow. You got a card? Yeah. Show me. Just give me your card. Ladies. Light, 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 light. Yeah. But then everything behind is gonna. Oh. I mean, it has nice stone, nice stone, and it's not as white. This is the easiest one to come up Definitely want to do something in here to accentuate that, that tree. Um, so you're sitting out here and you're looking at this as a designer. What is it that you want to see? You you just want to see those columns lit? No. What what kind of what kind of feeling that by just letting those columns is that going to convey? Well, I guess it, I'm, I'm also assuming there's light here already, so. Yeah, and once again, when those are on it, we're thinking landscape, that's true. When, when I, what I think is that I wouldn't want to see those recessed lights on that night. So again, you're tra talking about lighting from behind. I am, but I want to hear your ideas, because um, I know exactly what I would do. Now, I'm a, I'm a, 
I'm a I'm a softer lighting person. I don't I try not to accent light things if I can help it, unless that's really what the client wants. I mean, the hard thing is, is what Michelle, what and Trevor, what's in Trevor, the, Michelle and her husband. I mean, they sell lights. Right? Michelle, they want, yeah. yeah, they want to sell lights. So the more lights, the better for them. You know, yeah. yeah, I think I think they do want to sell lights, but I think they also want to they they want they want to do they want the best. Light. I think they want the best design possible. And quite honestly, that doesn't mean less fixtures. It just, I think, means the right fixtures in the right place. Do you, do you all understand how light waves cancel each other out? Teachers. <laughs> right, right. You're clueless? So, Remember, we're just electricians. <laughs> so if you took four lights and all shine them up in the same spot in the ceiling, if one light was shining up there and then you added another light and then another light and then another light, would that spot be any brighter on the ceiling? No, because it's a spotlight. No, but but I mean what I'm yeah what I'm saying is if you put if you if you put four lights on the floor and shine them all up at the exact same spot on the ceiling, that more lights you turn on with that spot on the ceiling actually get brighter. I think so. No. No. No, because you're still projecting the same foot cameras. Exactly. So what happens is and, and this this I didn't know either. I was terribly embarrassed. Uh, the lumen output is the lumen output. It is, and what happens is, is the signature light wave cancel. They cancel each other out. You can't. One light wave can't exceed another. Now there, there may be hair fractions. I, I'm not a lighting uh, engineer, but it doesn't. It's a hard lesson to learn. Unless, unless one was closer than the other. They're all in the exact same spot. They're in the exact same spot. Yep. The light waves cancel each other out. They cancel each other out, and that spot is just as bright if you had one, two, three, or four. And if you don't believe it, go home and try it. It's kind of interesting. It's kind of mind bending. I believe you, but I'm still there. Yeah, yeah, I did too. I was kind of here, So, like when I lay out lights, and I'm doing it in a bedroom, so I'm doing recessed lights, if this is two foot here, this is four foot there, and four foot there, and two foot there, because light goes down at an angle. But I was thinking I was avoiding these, these bright spots, but you're saying it doesn't matter. No, I'm just saying. Right. No, I'm just saying that if you point lights at the same at the same location, it doesn't make it any brighter. No, that matters because that does matter. Yeah, yes. you're you're not. You're, what you're doing is different because you're tapering. Up, like you're, it's a nice look that it tapers into dark and then tapers back into a brighter light. He's talking about you're not upping the juice by, right. by, yeah. by putting and, more on it. Right. And if you really want to get confused, come see one of my interior lighting demonstrations. You'll <laughs> you'll have to bring a calculator. What about lighting up underneath here? Yeah, now that's uh do you want do you want my input or do you guys want to keep looking at no, this yourself? We want your input. So so the first rule of landscape lighting is light requires distance. Putting a little saw a hardscape light under the lip here violates that rule. Say that rule again. Light requires distance. The farther the farther the light source is away from the subject of your light, the more control you have and the softer the light appears. So when you put a hardscape light, say right here on that step, yeah, it's fu fully functional. The problem is, is that when you trans transverse the step, it's gonna be super hot here and it's gonna create a dark edge. That's a tricky one. I'm not saying you shouldn't do it, but when you only have less than two feet here, those hardscape lights are gonna cast a really harsh, glary light. Problem two, mosquitoes. You've got a sitting area out here that doesn't require light. I would use what's called a portable, a candle, or an outdoor lamp to light that space, make this feel like a room, and not attract flying terrestrials and biting insects to this area. What I would do on this project is I would light once again from the inside, 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 and fill this space with light, let light bounce off the ceiling, let light bounce off the stone, and fill it with nice, warm, rich light. I don't need, if there are recessed lights, I don't want them to come on. And then let this do the same effect here. If the client wants more light, you light on the sides, but not the front. Let the carriage lights give the illusion that they're creating most of the light, even though they're not. And then over here, we have a very, we have a, uh, probably a French roof on it. You could easily put a fixture here that would downlight here. And over here, you can also downlight those steps from above, have nice, safe, soft light in a large area that will make it easier for people to transverse the stairs. Tree. I am not a fan of putting lights in trees halfway up and then shining in the upper canopy. It's really, really hard to do well. And I, I'm not that good. Darren might be, but I'm not. The other problem... I would go up from the ground yep, and down from up. Yep. When you have a heritage oak, let's assume this is a heritage oak. I don't know what species it is. I've seen a lot of people put, because it's a good place to hide pictures, they put it in the crust of the tree. 
even in a Texas environment or southern environment, the heat up, the turn off and attract some moisture, you will lock that tree up and it'll split mm. after many years. How do I know that? Because it kills you. Killer you. Mm. Yeah. And I did back it off when we do the service, the maintenance, so be careful with that. Trees are more sensitive than we can. And I work with the rebels. So if I did that job, I'd have a harvest installed. It's like, so it's like this. But when you say that though, so I miss, I I took that as you wouldn't put them in the tree. I wouldn't put them in the, I wouldn't put lights in the crutch of the tree. Where all the branches come down like right in here, I'd avoid that. Oh, I but you would still put them in the tree. I wouldn't put anything up light in the tree. I would do what Derek suggested, which is I would put lights throughout here, placed so that the entire canopy, let's assume it's an oak, the oak has got a nice underside of white. The light will reflect off the leaves. This whole area will be filled with soft, reflective light. But we have an interesting plant bed that runs along the base of the tree, some tropicals it looks like, and I don't know what those are. But by placing lights as far out as, once again, light requires distance. The better distance, in most cases, the better. I put fixtures out here so I could have total control, and I tilt them back with a long glare shield so that they could not be visible from the seating area, but that they would softly light the outside surrounding area of the tree. Is it 25 or would you go higher? Maybe a little higher. What, output? Yeah. yeah. Uh, probably 35. 35 now, the problem is we're going to, you know, especially in Oak, we're not going to be able to uplight this upper structure, especially in the winter. I don't want to see that because of the winter environment. Just like we already have fixtures up here, a fixture up here down in the steps, I would use fixtures up here to uplight the upper story of the tree. It'd be absolutely rough. Better than putting it up in the tree. Better than I wish we could see these pictures, these same <laughs> well, pictures. Finish right. Thing, right. You know? And, and that's how I'd address that. So we have no code violations. We've got the, the most beautiful tree I've seen all lit up, and then the entire house just glows almost from within. And the carriage lights are part of the landscape. Right Core drilling would take place on the inside and possibly on the sides. But if it were me and I was out in the pool and I wanted to look up at my beautiful house, I would not want to see glowing dots and lights. If I could help, if I could help, unless I wanted more light. Okay, let me change the topic. Right. Well, we're still on camera, so. Oh, I can